This is Brent coming at you with the overhead squat assessment. Now this is going to be a series of videos by request. In this first video, we're going to go ahead and go over what is ideal posture? What is that ideal that we're judging our overhead squat assessment against? As well as how to set up the overhead squat assessment for your patient or client so that you know you're getting an accurate read as we go into signs and symptoms. So I'm going to have my friend come out. Leanne is going to show us exactly what good posture looks like. Now you guys notice I have some key words written up here. These are the key segments or joints that I want to look at to make sure I have everything lined up ideally. Now we start with the feet. That's because everything stacks on top of the feet. So if I were to fix her head, fix her shoulders, fix her hips, and then try to fix her feet, there is a chance I could change all of that alignment back up. We're going to go ahead and start bottom up. Now with the feet, there's basically three things to think about. I want them parallel, hip width, and I want to make sure that I have some sort of medial arch, which I'll explain in a second here. So first things first, feet parallel, let's define that term. Feet parallel is going to be second toe pointing forward. If you guys just threw your hands out in front of you, you guys would notice that it's actually your index finger that points upward and your thumb kind of points in. So if you thought about your feet doing the same thing, it's actually second toe pointing forward. Big toe is going to point in just a little bit. I know you guys are going to see a lot of this turnout. So the next thing is going to be hip width. Now be careful. These are not Leanne's hips. These are Leanne's thighs. This is her vastus lateralis. Her hip joint is actually just underneath her ASIS. So her ASIS, for those of you guys who aren't familiar with your palpations, not a hard palpation to find. You're just going to go ahead and find what most people call their hips, the top of their ilium. Palpate around. You guys will notice a notch right before it becomes soft tissue. So we want to make sure that the feet are in line with that ASIS. All right, her hip joint is right behind this point. Next, I want to make sure that she has some sort of medial arch. Now, it is very helpful when you guys do your overhead squat assessment to have somebody take their shoes off. They can probably leave their socks on unless you guys are doing some more advanced assessments, but at least the shoes off will allow you to see this little space in here. I shouldn't see, I don't know if you guys are aware where the first metatarsal cuneiform joint is and then the cuneonavicular joint is, but these bones right here in the middle of her foot shouldn't be t touching the floor. If you guys see those bones riding on the floor, that is going to be something we notice on our assessment as a dysfunction. I want to at least try to get them set up. Hey, can you maintain that position? Good. All right, the next thing we're going to go to is the knees. Now, in static posture, we expect her knees to be in line, but when she moves, if you can give me a little dip here and give me a little quarter squat, we're going to want to see her patella track over her second and third toe. So once again, if I go back to this position with my hands, this would be analogous to the middle of my hand. I want my patella to track right through the middle of my foot. Now the lumbopelvic hip complex, as you guys can see here, LPHC, has several things that we're looking at, or at least four or five things that I'm looking at right off the bat. Leanne, you can go ahead and turn sideways. I want to number one, make sure she's in neutral. That's okay. So I had you guys palpate the ASIS here. If I were to put this part of her pants on her ASIS, palpate around her ilium and found this other bony notch here, which go ahead and turn your back to the camera. There you go. You guys can see these two bony notches being her PSIS are actually a lot closer together than the ASISR. But if I go ahead and put the back of her pants up on her PSIS, and then I line up her pants, that gives me a good idea of whether her pelvis is level. And that's the first thing I want to notice. Is this level? Or is she turned in a little bit, which you guys might already know is an anterior pelvic tilt. Usually what comes with that is now we see that there's this excessive curve. We wanted a neutral curve, which we saw Leanne started with. And then as we go through the overhead squat assessment, we'll talk about something called an excessive forward lean. And I also want to make sure that Leanne, even just standing there, has a little bit of abdominal tone. I know you guys have seen, I hate to have you do this, Leanne, but go ahead and totally relax out your TVA. All right, so you guys see those people who have like, <laughs> <laughs> they have no abdominal tone whatsoever. You know, they got that little like beer belly thing going on. Like we want just a little bit of beach belly. That should be kind of normal as we're standing there. Now, next thing we're going to look at is shoulder girdle. When I sit here and I got Leanne, you can go ahead and face the camera. When I have Leanne getting set up, 
we know that a lot of individuals have a propensity to get here with their shoulders. So I want to make sure I at least cue shoulders down and back to start, see if she can even get to this position. Now this is going to be a little interesting when we go into an overhead squat because I'm actually going to have Leanne throw her arms in the air, right? Elbows locked, she's just going to go straight up. And what I want to make sure is she did exactly what she did, which is her shoulders kind of stayed down as opposed to raising her arms like this, where you see shoulders <laughs> come up <laughs> to your ears. All right, as I kind of manhandle Leanne here. And the last thing I want to look for is the head, guys. Let me have you go ahead and turn sideways. I know a lot of you guys see this forward head tilt. All right, we see this like protruding chin. We want to make sure that Leanne's ear kind of lines up her, with her shoulder, assuming that I just put her shoulder into optimal posture by carrying her down and back. Now, when you get somebody set up for this overhead squat assessment, this is what you start with. All right, so go ahead and turn straight. But with all that being said, you don't want to go heavy, heavy, heavy on the cues. I don't want to cue Leanne into a million positions that she's not used to being in. I don't want to give her a million instructions. I want to get a clean assessment. So basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to set up her feet, make sure she starts with her feet parallel. I'm going to, make, I'm going to kind of check out her pelvis. I might adjust her pants so it's easier for me to see whether her pants are level. I'm not going to necessarily say anything to her. Of course, ask permission if you're going to palpate. I'm going to go ahead and say arms up. All right, we'll check to make sure that her head's straight. And then I'm just go ahead and have her sit. You guys notice I didn't use a whole lot of words. It's like, okay, feet parallel. Good. Hands up. And go ahead and sit back for me. It's about all the cue I want to give. All right, so once we get into the next video and I talk about common postural dysfunctions and the common signs we'll see, we'll talk about how we're going to notate all this stuff. Now, a couple things you do have to be aware of. These things can destroy your squat assessment. Somebody has to be able to keep their heels on the floor. Every once in a while, let me go ahead and have you turn sideways. You'll see somebody, can you squat and let your heels come up? Have you ever seen that? Mm -hmm. Right? Every once in a while, you guys will see this. And somebody's heels will come up off the floor as they're squatting. That is going to destroy your assessment. You might be able to guess that they have tight calves from that. But unfortunately, because they've lifted their ankle off, you really don't know how that's affecting the rest of their kinetic chain. All right, the other thing we want to make sure is they're not faking it. All right, I know a lot of fitness professionals out there, a lot of athletes out there, they've been taught how to do a squat. So if you have to, here's the trick I use. Rather than having them do an overhead squat assessment, I'll have them do a sit and stand assessment. Now they don't necessarily know it's an exercise, but you guys, as professionals doing your assessment, know that there is no difference between sitting and standing and your overhead squat. So I could say, go ahead and put your hands up over your head, stand up, good, sit back down, stand up, good, can you sit down with only touching your butt to the chair and getting back up? Good. So you guys can see this is the exact same thing. This is also a wonderful regression if you guys have maybe a less well-conditioned or an older population who can't do an overhead squat to begin with, you could break it down, not do the overhead part. You could have them put their hands on their waist to start or hands over their head to start, or maybe break it apart and do this part as one part of the assessment and sitting as the other. But if I go ahead and take just about anybody and go, okay, let me just have you sit and stand. I know from here, at least here down, that's the exact same assessment, and I can get almost anybody to do that. All right, so there you guys go. We have optimal posture, which is gonna be, reviewing real quick, feet parallel, hip width with a mild medial arch, knees in line with the second and third toe. That's patella in line with the second and third toe. Lumbopelvic hip complex, I'm gonna go ahead and set somebody's pants up so that I can see if her lumbopelvic hip complex is in neutral. Shoulder girdle, shoulders down and back. That includes even when I put my arms up, shoulder girdle is down and back. And then head, I'm gonna at least look to try to start in neutral position. I hope that give, this gives you guys a good foundation for what is going to happen in the overhead squat video series as we start pulling this thing apart sign by sign. Thanks again.